thank you everyone for joining and thank you Edward and Kwan for introducing me for today's talk. So I'll go ahead and share my screen. To put the screen on. Yeah. I think you can see, yeah, you can see my screen. Okay, so <clears throat> as Quan has introduced me, I'm Anthony Faustin, uh, data scientist at CEDA, and my talk uh, will be on deep neural network with energy-based uh, learning. I work with the Applied Research Group at CEDA, and my research uh, is focused on applied machine learning uh, for different application, but I've been working uh, much on machine learning for green energy, how we could use machine learning for energy analytics, but also machine learning for uh, ethnic innovation data. But also I'm interested in exploring uh, robust machine learning that could be applicable for industrial application. And this talk is based on that uh, line of research. We'll be exploring how we could use deep neural network and energy-based learning uh, to improve and, and see if, if we could uh, come up with a good model which, which improve the robustness of uh, existing deep uh, neural, uh, neural network for different application. So in today, uh, basically my talk, I will first give introduction, which will motivate you, okay, the success of deep learning and why we need uh, another learning uh, paradigm in, in existing deep neural network. And then I will introduce the energy-based model and, and give you the connection between the energy-based model and deep neural uh, network. And then uh, I will give a short introduction on how we could train or learn from energy-based model. And lastly, I will summarize a different application in which uh, deep neural network and energy-based model has been applied with uh, good performance. And I will conclude uh, my presentation's conclusion. So, we have seen uh, deep neural network being uh, applied to a variety of application, ranging from computer vision uh, to safe driving car, uh, game, uh, natural language processing, things like machine learning translation with good performance. So we see that, okay, deep learning is being applied for this application. And of course, it has been like a backbone for most existing companies like Google, uh, Facebook, uh, which make use of this deep learning for a variety of application. You can, you, you can name uh, the Google translation, for example, the image search, which, 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 which give a uh, good performance. But then despite the success of uh, deep genetic, but then there are uh, some challenge which limit uh, the applicability of deep neural network, especially for complex, uh, uh, complex application. And this is based on the fact that uh, deep neural network uh, learn by using a finite number of computation steps. So you will have uh, several layers stuck together and this learn higher likelihood feature and produce a single prediction. This is fine, but at some point this might uh, cause a problem, especially when you want to compute a complex, when the output, when the prediction require a complex computation. For example, you want to do a very complex uh, inference. So such kind of computation which give you uh, a single prediction might not be uh, sufficient. But then at some point, maybe you want to get multiple possible output from the input. So given a single input, you want to infer multiple possible output. So existing deep neural net, which just give a single prediction from a given input is, 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 is a challenge for this kind of uh, situation. But also deep neural network have been successful because uh, you, you, you can achieve good performance with deep neural network when you have a large, uh, data sets, uh, label data set. But can we learn from a few data, set, data, uh, data, data labels that we have? This is, an, this is an, also another uh, challenge that uh, limit the applicability of deep neural network for uh, most of the application. But deep neural network also, they don't have uh, a good mechanism to quantify uncertainty. And this is very important for most application, uh, which for most critical application, for example, in, in, uh, in medical diagnosis or uh, safe driving car and the like. So this uh, issue, of course, require a different uh, learning approach that we could address uh, these kind of uh, challenges. And energy-based model is one of the learning framework that 
uh, address uh, uh, some or if, if not most of these uh, challenges. Then, uh, so what is energy-based uh, model? So if you compare energy-based model and the uh, deep neural network, so basically with energy-based model, you just learn uh, the dependence between two variables. So instead of learning uh, how X is related to Y, you learn how X and Y relate to each other. So it means you learn the association between uh, two variables by, by using just a scalar parametric function, which is called the energy function. So with energy-based model, you have one, you will have energy function. This will capture the statistical properties of the of your input data x and y, and uh, the main uh, focus will be okay. The energy function will have low energy when these two val two variable fit together when y is compatible to x, and it will have high energy otherwise. So basically, with energy-based model, if you compare energy-based model and uh, deep neural network. We say that the energy-based model is an implicit function that which mainly focuses about capturing the dependence between x and y, while deep neural network or is an explicit function which only caps the capture uh, compute y from uh, from x. And this is the main difference. And uh, it means if you compare these two, you find okay, energy-based model now because you want, you, you 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 encode the dependence between variable rather than just inferring uh, y from x. This Add more advantage in the learning uh, uh, in, in, in the learning approach from energy based uh, energy based model. So the energy function, uh, which encode the relationship between x and y, is used for inference. So once you have find the energy function, uh, that, that 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 let that 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 map the relation between x and y, then you can use this for inference. And uh, this energy function could be conditional energy where you learn uh, two variable or unconditional energy where you have only single variable like X. And once you have energy, so for example, if you have a conditional energy, then once you have the energy function, you can do inference by just taking, uh, finding, uh, minimizing the energy function with respect to given X, you can minimize, you find value of Y that give you a uh, minimum, uh, minimum energy. And then that would be the, 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 the estimate of Y. So with this, inference, then the energy-based model could be used for different tasks, learning from prediction, uh, classification, or decision-making, in which the focus would be finding the value of y, which is most comp compatible with x. So given the energy function, which encode the relationship between x and y, then you only need to find, okay, which value of y is compatible, would have minimum energy, and then you use this, then you can use this for prediction, classification, or decision-making. But this also allow you to do linking. For example, if you have two uh, variable of y, well, one and y two, then you can compare which value of y have minimum energy, and then using this, then you can link this to uh, to variable. But also, you can do this for density estimation. This could be whether just estimating density of a single variable or doing conditional uh, density estimation. You can transform uh, the energy-based model into probabilistic model. By, only, by using the uh, Gibbs distribution. So basically what you do, uh, just do exponential of energy function uh, divided by uh, this, the theta, where the theta is the normalizing constant. We know from probability theory that, okay, probability should have, uh, should be non-negative and should, should sum to one. So basically the exponential transform this energy function into probabilistic by making sure that, okay, this probability, this probability is, uh, Greater than zero, but also this, uh, the theta make sure that okay the probability is sum to, to one, and if you compare this with other probabilistic model, this comes with an advantage because the prob the probabilistic model is defined uh, with energy function, which give you uh, flexibility on how you could define a different function to represent your energy function, but the addition of this uh, the theta of course add uh, another complexity of, 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 of sampling from there because if you see that the theta should be a uh, summation of, of all energy function, then this in most cases, computing this is most cases tractable. And this is the reason that why energy-based model has been existing for quite some time, but their success has been, we have seen uh, that have been applied recently because the mechanism for estimating this has, was, was, has been a challenge. And recently, there are different algorithms which make it easy now to uh, compute uh, the theta, and that's why we see uh, most application applied for, uh, for, for this uh, energy-based energy -based model. So you could also uh, 
add extra variable, we call it latent variable. So you, for example, instead of only uh, Y depending on X, we could have another variable Z, which is called latent variable. And then we learn the relation between uh, these three variables, X, Y, and the latent variable Z. And this gives more flexibility of, uh, for, of, of using energy-based energy model for, but for, 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 for different and complex application. For example, once you have the energy function, then you could learn how to generate X given Z or predict Y given Z implicitly, implicitly by just minimizing the energy function with respect to X or with respect to Y given Z. And these allow a machine to produce multiple outputs, not just one. For example, if you're doing machine translation, uh, for example, from uh, German to English, for example, uh, for given one sentence of German, there might be several uh, sentences of from English, which was the same meaning. So with energy-based model, it means you can let the model give several uh, uh, prediction output of this uh, uh, English uh, translation, and then you could choose which one uh, give you better uh, better meaning compared to the other. And this allows to encode multiple prediction from the uh, from, 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 from from the model. Now, what is the connection then between a uh, neural network and energy-based uh, model? As we have seen that energy -based, with energy-based model, the, energy, the, the, the main component in the energy function, and this energy function can be parameterized by, can be parameterized by any function, including a deep neural network. So we could combine then a deep neural network and energy-based model by parameterizing this energy function with deep neural network, and this, allowed to explore the predictive power of deep neural network, but at the same time, the benefit of energy-based model. Let's take a simple example. Suppose we have a deep neural network uh, with this function, with parameter theta, which uh, we, how we take input x, map, x map, map input x to y, and give a scalar uh, value. We could interpret this uh, function as a negative energy function. And then if we plug uh, into the energy function uh, definition, we'll have a joint uh, distribution between X and Y, which will be exponential of the deep neural network divided by the uh, normalizing constant. So from Bayesian uh, inference, we know that, okay, the probability density of X could be obtained by summing this joint distribution. So we'll end up having uh, these uh, this uh, energy function, summation of energy function. From this, once you have joint distribution and uh, the density of X, we could estimate uh, the condition of X, of Y given X by dividing this and this. So taking this, it means we could transform the deep neural network like this, where you have the neural network and then you input and only just use existing uh, output from neural network transform this, we interpret the output of a neural network as the energy function. And then from this, you will have uh, both the density and the joint. You can learn both the, you can learn the, the density and the, and, 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 and the condition of distribution. So once you have this information, it means we can learn this by, sorry, we can learn this by, from, uh, if you see from equation seven, the density distribution is a summation of uh, the energy functions, which is the condition distribution, which is equivalent of log, uh, log sum of the output of your uh, uh, deep neural network. So given this, we could learn this uh, combination of neural, neural, uh, neural net as energy function by minimizing this uh, function, which is the density and the condition distribution. Now, for different uh, deep neural network, you know, for example, for classification uh, problem, this conditional uh, distribution could be a cross entropy loss, could be loss. So depending on what uh, task you are working on for deep neural network, this condition could, uh, you, you could use existing uh, deep neural network loss. But the question is, how do we learn this uh, density? P, 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 P of X. So we could now rely on energy-based learning to learn uh, this. So if you see this connection, you find that 
basically the energy based combining energy based model and deep neural network provide a unified framework for probabilistic and probabilistic learning approach and uh, because with energy based model uh, the energy the probability uh, is 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 we, we use energy function to to, to express the, uh, the probability. So there is no proper normalization uh, constants is, is required as in other probabilistic approach. And this make it easy, uh, it means allow more flexibility in the design of the architecture or loss function that you could use. So in the end, you will have a unified framework which combine discriminative learning and generative learning in one, uh, in one framework. So at the end, of course, you can learn how to generate your data, but at the same time, learn how to, for example, do classification or do a particular, depending on the task that you, you do. So combining these and uh, energy-based model and different neural network, it's like, okay, you, you're having a unified framework which combine a generative model and discriminative model in one, uh, in one uh, unified uh, framework. Okay, so once we now we know okay what we know uh, what the motivation and what the energy based model, but the, the, the next is in what is the connection between the energy based model and deep neural network. The next is okay, how can we learn from uh, energy based model and especially the the density distribution? How can we learn from that? Because we know that okay, it's very uh, intractable to estimate the normalizing uh, constant. So basically, learning in, learning in energy based model is mainly finding the energy function that will give you low energy to observe uh, data. So basically, the learning will assign low energy val to input that belong to data distribution and high val to the data that are out of the data distribution. So given the energy function of Px, then we could find the log likelihood of uh, this energy function, which is equivalent to, of course, equation 11, and of course, from the previous discussion we saw that computing, computing this the theta is intractable, and this is because you need to sum uh, through all the data sample that you have. For example, if you have if your input x is image of sixteen times sixteen three channel image, so computing the theta will require you doing summation over two plus six times two plus six times two plus six power sixteen times sixteen. So this computation is very expensive. For this small image, for this small image, assume we have high dimensional video or uh, high dimensional uh, uh, image. So it means this is very computation expensive. So we need to find uh, a, a best approach to be able to uh, estimate this. However, we could sample this and make it easy to uh, estimate uh, the data. So we could use, you could use a maximum likelihood estimation, which mainly aim to maximize the log, log, log likelihood function. Maximizing log, log likelihood function in a probabilistic model, this is equivalent in minimizing the uh, kullback layback divergence, scale divergence. And if you, do, if you find the derivative of the log likelihood for energy function, you end up having this equation 12. And if you do negative of this, this is equivalent to log likelihood, which is equal to uh, the gradient of uh, energy function, minus the expectation of the energy function, but this through all your data sample. And remember, this, uh, this expectation is coming from the uh, normalizing constant, which is intractable. However, we could approximate this through samples using, for example, Monte Carlo estimation or Lagrange dy dynamics. Now, recently, uh, stochastic gradient Lagrange dynamics has been uh, used ex effectively to sample this and make it easy to compute uh, to compute uh, this expectation. Basically, it make use of the gradient of the energy function to do sampling in, in such a way that okay, the next sample will be equal to the previous sample minus the derivative of the previous sample plus uh, this uh, parameter, where this parameter is just use just sample from the normal uh, distribution with zero mean and alpha standard deviation. And the initial sample will be sampled from the uh, uniform distribution, uh, which is the initial sample. So doing this, it means the sampling will define a noise distribution Q theta, such that the sample will be like of generating by this uh, distribution. So as we keep on sampling and learning, it means uh, the noise distribution will approximate the data distribution. 
but we see that for this, the sampling is generated from the distribution defined by, uh, by energy function, which is quite different from another, other sampling technologies, for example, in variation inference, where you need to have a specific neural network for generating sample. But this, the same uh, neural network will be used for creating sample using this uh, approach. However, this uh, sampling has been uh, shown to be, uh, to give good performance, but this somehow is complex doing this sampling. So other approach for learning uh, edge-based model is using noise contrastive estimation. The idea is, okay, because uh, normalizing constant is uh, intractable, can we avoid computing this and then just learn from the model? So the idea is that fine, if we replace the, the, this normalizing constant with a, a constant C, a free parameter C, and then transform the density into this equation, exponential negative uh, energy function minus C, then we can now get rid of uh, normalizing constant by transforming to a free parameter and then just learn this with the model parameter. And this could be achieved by introducing a noise distribution, Q theta, which will turn then the energy-based model estimation into classification problem. So basically you have, you have two distribution. Okay, you have the data distribution and the noise distribution. And then you now learn to, to maximize this, uh, this, 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 this loss function, which is basically the expectation of the log of your data distribution divided by data distribution plus noise distribution, plus expectation of noise distribution divided by data and noise distribution. However, this pose a requirement for how do you define the noise distribution? In order to, to use this, the noise distribution to satisfy uh, three main uh, criteria. One, it should be tractable, it should be easy to compute uh, the noise distribution. But two, it should be very easy to draw sample from the distribution. But number three, this, the noise distribution should be very close to the data distribution. It's easy to find distribution which satisfy one and two, but it's really challenging to finding a noise distribution which match, which is very close to the data distribution. And to address this, listeners have been proposed, uh, for example, in this paper, they proposed a flow contrastive estimation, which uh, make use of this flow model uh, to, to, represent, to represent this uh, noise, uh, noise, noise distribution. So this is uh, uh, some of the uh, learning approach that has been uh, used for learning the energy-based energy -based model. So now we know okay, how we can learn from energy-based model. Let's see how deep neural network and energy-based model has been applied and what, and then see the advantages that we, 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 we get by combining these two approach. So the last several applications, and one of the application is generative modeling. So energy-based model uh, with deep neural network has been used to model, can be used to model the underlying data distribution. And uh, several generative model for the same task do exist like, again, variation inference and flow-based model. But compared to this, end-based model is flexible because you don't need an extreme neural net to generate a sample. For example, with variation inference, you need to have encoder and decoder. So it means one for generating sample and so that you can compare the sample you generated from a neural network and the sample you, you and, 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 the, and, the, and, and, the, and the data. But with any energy based model, these sample are implicitly generated. So you don't need to have another uh, architecture for, for, for generating sample. And this add more flexibility on the design of, 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 of flexibility for neural network architecture that you could use uh, to, 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 to build your deep neural network energy based model. And several uh, experiment has been done uh, to show that, okay, the sample generated by any based model is more uh, clear and good compared to the sample generated by other models. For example, in this paper, they compared uh, the sample generated from, from uh, unconditional distribution and the sample for any based model for CIFAR datasets, which is the image datasets. As you can see, the sample from the EDM energy based model is more clear compared to the sample generated from the, uh, from the other generative uh, model. And also in this paper, they show the different uh, distribution 
the, the, the different distribution, uh, different generation of sample for different, uh, for different uh, uh, genetic model. And you could see the energy-based model is uh, flow-based contrast estimation, of course, to give very clear uh, sample. And of course, you could find, so based on these two, it, 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 we found that energy-based model are effective genetic model for multi-dimensional inputs like image uh, or video. So you could, of course, mo listen to most uh, uh, recent works has been uh, ex experimented with this energy-based model for image, uh, for image data. And of course, you could find the implementation of these two paper which uh, applied deep neural, net, deep neural network and based model for genetic modeling. Uh, Genetic modeling. So the implement the code implementation then the experiment will be found on this uh, on this link for on how the deep neural network and based model has been used for generative uh, modeling. So if you remember from uh, while into while while showing the connection between deep neural network and the uh, and based model, we have a like okay we have. A unified framework which combine uh, this primitive model and generative model. Now, this comes with an advantage, making it easier to perform semi supervised learning. So, energy based model can be easily generalized to perform semi supervised learning. And this is very important because it, it, in most cases, in some applications, it's very hard to generate, label data, uh, to generate data for training this model, especially for deep learning model. So, if having a framework which gives uh, ability to perform semi-supervised learning means this is very important for most applications. And it has been shown that, uh, for example, in this paper, they do an experiment, just they combine these two uh, spiral. You, we could, you could see that there's two spiral combined here. The one uh, with the, and, and they only provide few data sample to the model and let the model learn to differentiate these two spiral. And you could see with the energy based model, it was capable of, of, of uh, learning these two classes, the red one and the blue one. And of course, you could see even the, the connection, it, it learned the smooth connected, connected cluster of these uh, two different, two different uh, patterns. So it means the end based model tend to learn these, and this is very important for semi supervised learning. So this implies that end based model could be explored uh, for semi supervised learning, which is very important situation where you don't have minimum you have you have you don't have enough labeled data to build your machinery model and of course you could find uh, more results on uh, on the supervised learning in this uh, in this in this paper another application is classification so deep neural network uh, has been energy based model and deep neural has been uh, applied for classification uh, approach and there's two paper which has implemented this one is they implement a joint energy based model <laughs> applying the uh, the SGLD sampling uh, strategies for learning and the other one they apply they use hybrid distributive genetic model which they optimize supervised learning they show that okay energy based model can be transformed into contrastive learning if you if you if you come across there is now going on a safe supervised learning with where Contrastive learning has been one of the uh, effective approach for safe supervised learning. So they show that energy-based model can you you, you could learn a, a good classifier by using specific safe supervised learning, which is basically the discriminative uh, learning with contrastive learning, where the energy-based model could be uh, transformed into contrastive learning and achieve good classification performance. And they compare the result with uh, for CIFAL datasets for ten and the. Uh, CIFAL 100, they compare the result between uh, supervised learning and supervised contrastive learning and the energy-based model with, with the gem and this hybrid. And they found that, of course, the energy-based model seem to offer good performance, comparative performance, but this come with another advantage. For example, they show that using energy-based model you end up having good performance, but at the same time, you have improved uncertainty quantification. You have good model calibration, but you can also use the same model to detect out of distribution detection, but also the same model would be robust to adversarial, adversarial example. We shall discuss about this uh, 
aspect. But then this show that uh, combining these two approach is very, very important. It's, it's add more uh, 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 important aspect by making uh, deep neural network more robust and making it even easier to quantify uncertainty. For example, from, uh, with model calibration, we, 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 it's, we, we uh, mo exi most existing deep neural network, they, they give, they are overconfident. They give uh, good, they, they give prediction with high uh, confidence. And sometimes this, this prediction might be long. But of course, for example, you have a classifier which just supply an input. Then it gives you maybe this is an input is it gives a long prediction, but with high uh, with high confidence. And this is the serious problem for uh, applicate for, for model that need to be applied in uh, in, in, in in little word or industrial application. For calibration, we, we need a model to be calibrated in such a way that okay, the predictive confidence. Uh, align with the misclassification like that okay if the model give you a prediction of 0 0.9 if a model give a prediction with 0 0.9 confidence then it should it should have 90 percent chance of being correct but this is not the case uh, for deep neural network but it has been shown that combining these two approach significantly improve the calibration of your classifier of your model for example they in this paper they uh, compare uh, the neural net, the baseline, just normal neural network, wide less net, and the same with uh, energy-based model. And you could see with the same, with almost the same, uh, with almost the same accuracy, but the expected calibration error is very, very low for energy-based model compared to uh, just a normal neural, uh, neural network. So this is important aspect especially if we need to use, uh, if we, for, for model which need to be deployed uh, uh, in, in, in little weight scenario. So the advantage we get by combining these two aspects that found, the energy based model will improve the calibration of your classifier. So without needing to maybe do any retraining or tweaking on, 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 on the model. But other aspect that come with energy based model is uh, out of distribution detection. And this is, is a challenge, for example, for deep neural network. If we, for example, if you train uh, your model, for example, suppose this is a training set, which just, you just want to, to, dip, to, 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 to classify a different class of dog. So your model will see this uh, class of different uh, species of dog. If you subject a new species, which was not part of the, of the training sample, deep neural network will tend to give you any of the class among the class that was being the training set and with high confidence. But in actual fact, we do expect that, okay, the model could say, okay, this is the new class. I have never seen this before. So this is the novel unseen class. Maybe you need to incorporate in your model and then do the training. So energy, uh, so all, all out of distribution detection is very, very important aspect that need to be taken into consideration, especially because in most cases, while deploying your model into production, you might, the model might encounter new samples which have never uh, seen before. And then you need, the model need to, be, need to be able to tell you, okay, this is the new sample which I've never seen before. Okay, I don't know about this. Rather than just giving you a prediction of any of, this, any of, the, any of the example that you have on your, on your image, on, on, on your data set. So it has been shown that uh, combined deep neural network in the best model improve uh, out of distribution detection without retraining your model with those sample. And this is come because in the way you have a unifying framework of doing a generative model and discriminative model. So the model will learn the distribution of your sample so it can easily differentiate, okay, this was not part of my, my part of this, part of the training sample that I, I have seen before. And this is very important for uh, application that need to be deployed uh, in little application. And it has been shown that, okay, compared to other existing approach, the any based model seems to give a uh, good uh, performance for out of this, out of this distribution de detection. Another important aspect, and this was, we, we, we saw this from the uh, first presentation that we had, where uh, the presenter showed that, okay, one important uh, challenge of existing deep neural, neural network is on adversarial attack because existing deep neural networks are very sensitive to 
perturbation to noise. So if you add just more noise in the input sample, for example, the model could, okay, this is the panda. If you, sub, if you, if you subject this uh, image to, a, for example, CNN could give you, okay, this is the panda with 50% confidence. But if you add a noise, in this image and subject the same image, the model will give you a completely different uh, cross with 99 with high confidence. And this is a little uh, critical uh, issue which need to be addressed as of course the, from the first presentation that we saw, okay, different approach. But it has been shown that uh, combined deep neural network and engine based model uh, offer good uh, adversarial uh, robustness without explicit training, retraining your model to address this challenge. So you, you have this in, 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 in the model. So, and it has been, for example, they, from the, this paper, they compared uh, the robustness of your model against uh, adversarial attack and compared with the baseline. You could see with the baseline, the normal deep neural net network will sharply drop, the performance will sharply drop for small perturbation. But for energy-based model, you could see, okay, the, the effects is not is, is like linear as with the increase in this number of uh, noise perturbation. And this without doing any uh, 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 retraining to detect this adversarial uh, attack. So this is important aspect that need, of course, which is uh, for when it comes to robustness of uh, deep neural network, for especially for application in little word uh, scenario. But another important aspect and important uh, advantage that we, we see by combining deep neural network and based model, and maybe this could change the way we, uh, we approach the learning in deep neural network and other machine learning in general, is on compositional learning. For example, the way human being learn uh, is quite different from the deep neural network, uh, for the neural network learn. We, we, we are capable of composing, uh, learning complex concept by only combining simple, uh, simple concept. So once, for example, you can combine a simple uh, concept and then be able to generalize to a very complex uh, concept. But this is not the case for deep neural network. They are not good at compositional learning. And as a result, they, they need a lot of data to be able to memorize, uh, just memorize every uh, sample that you come across to be able to generalize well. But it has been shown that energy-based model exhibit composition, comp uh, good compositional learning by dialect combine the probability of the end function. For example, in this, if you, if you see this uh, image, they learn uh, different, uh, different concept, different object at different position. So this, you have this uh, object, a cube, at different position, and then, where this gray is the energy function, is the energy for each concept. You can see, okay, for this one, the energy-based model could just say, okay, the energy is high where the objects, at the, at the position where you have the objects. And uh, when they combine this energy function, if you, com if you take this, and when you combine these two, for example, you take this and this, without retraining the model, the energy, the, the, the model, could learn the biomodel, uh, it, it, it show these two objects are aligned. So it means this, the energy function is basically the result of summing this energy function and this function. What does this imply? It means you can learn a, con a small concept by energy function, and then you could combine this uh, concept to learn a very complex concept. And this approach has been applied, for example, there's one paper for reinforcement learning where they use energy-based model to learn concept. You just, okay, you have energy function, which learn different small concepts, and then combine this uh, small concept to learn a very complex uh, uh, concept. In this example, where they train a model, different shape at different position with different shape and color. And then, when they, com they combine this, uh, once you have trained, you, you train the energy-based model for an object at different position with different shape and different color. When you combine this, the, en the energy function were able to produce a new object shape 
at different position and then sometimes with different color. What does it imply? It, it, this implies that, okay, with energy based model, we could just learn a small concept and then combine this small concept and be able to learn complex uh, concept. And this is a very important aspect. And maybe once exploring this approach could uh, improve the way uh, we learn in deep neural network and maybe uh, improve, for example, in reference make learning or in uh, zero shot uh, zero shot learning or meta learning, where it's very very you uh, is struck by getting to a formula around that. So these are the sum of the uh, application where uh, a deep neural network interface model has been uh, applied, and we see that okay, this has more of uh, advantage uh, in deep neural uh, in deep neural uh, network. To conclude, we have seen that end based model is very flexible class of uh, model, which combined with deep neural network, we have a unified probabilistic uh, model, uh, which allow us to model high dimensional probability distribution, which come with advantage like, okay, how easy to quantify uncertainty, uh, be able to detect uh, things like uh, out of distribution, uh, robustness to advers adversarial uh, attack, but also uh, make it easy being good with, uh, with compositional uh, learning. However, most of the results so far has been uh, presented from academic uh, papers. So it's high time to explore uh, this learning approach and extend and try to understand the applicability in industrial industry application. But so far, based on the results that have been seen, it's, it's offer a lot of flexibility on how we can uh, use a deep neural network for complex, uh, for complex, uh, for complex infrastructure, for complex uh, uh, tasks in industrial application. Yeah, and this marks the end of my presentation. Thank you for, uh, for listening, and I will 